Colombia is a country with two faces. Unfortunately, we all know the bad one, drug lords, terrorism, and poverty. However, there is another, much better side. Colombia is one of the most stable economies in all of Latin America. For example, Colombia has never experienced hyperinflation. and they have the best credit history in all of Latin America. Since 1930, the Colombian government has always paid back its debts. And yes, I know, none of this is so spectacular if it weren't for the fact that we are talking about a Latin American country. I mean, compared to Venezuela, Argentina, Brazil, or even Mexico, Colombia is not so bad. However, all of this has changed with the coronavirus. Colombia has been one of the most affected countries in the world, not only in human terms, but also in economic losses. In this context, the government has raised taxes, and this tax increase has provoked protests. And what could have been a simple protest has ended in real catastrophe. Check it out. Colombia raises death toll in protests against President Duque to 47, El Periodico. And here comes the debate that Colombians are having now. Some say that the Colombian police are ultra-violent. Others say that the protesters are violent. Even some Colombian politicians like former President Alvaro Uribe Velez have gone so far as to claim that there are terrorist groups infiltrating the protest. So the question that we are asking today is, who is right? Why does Ivan Duque want to raise taxes? And why does the Damascus Doctrine place such an important role in this story. Today, we're going to answer these questions. But first, first I have to tell you about Latin Politic. Many of you have asked us to talk about Latin America more, and that is why that we've launched our own newsletter specializing in Latin American geopolitics. For only $5 a month, which is the price of a Big Mac menu in Bogota, you will receive three newsletters in your inbox every week with our analysis on Latin American geopolitics. In Latin Politic, you will discover many things that are hardly talked about in the mainstream media. For example, you will discover all the details of the struggle between China and the United States for Brazil's resources, or why Russia has so many interests in Argentina. In other words, if you subscribe to Latin Politic, you will not only be supporting visual politic, but you will also have access to information that is very difficult to find in any other media. You can find all the information at latampolitic.com. And now, let's take a look at some history. The whole following the pandemic. I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to assume that you are not going to know how to answer me. How many people pay income tax in Colombia? Think about it. We're talking about one of the most populous countries in Latin America. They have a population of over 50 million inhabitants. So, how many of them pay income tax? Well, in the year 2020, we are talking about only 1.6 million people. And you'll say, what? Really? How is that even possible? And in case any of you were wondering, no, the answer is not fraud. You see, most countries in Latin America have two major problems, poverty and the underground economy. To give you an idea, 67% of Colombians earn less than $170 USD per month. In addition, it is estimated that 54% of the entire Colombian economy is informal. And yes, within this 54% is where all all the drug traffickers that have made this country sadly infamous would be. On top of this, we must add political corruption, which takes billions of dollars every year. As you can imagine, given this situation, it is very difficult to collect taxes by conventional means. And you're probably wondering, so where does the Colombian state get the money from? Well, basically, wherever it can. Since they cannot tax income, Colombia has one of the highest consumption taxes in Latin America. Almost all consumer products are taxed at 19%. On the other hand, Colombia also has a very high corporate tax, extremely high. To give you an idea, formal companies can pay up to 71% effective tax on profits. And as you can imagine, this is a problem. On the one hand, the government of Ivan Duque wants to lower corporate taxes to try to create new economic sectors. And on the other hand, it needs to look for other ways to raise revenue. In other words, Colombia has had a fiscal problem for decades. However, by all accounts, Colombia was able to balance the books until the pandemic arrived. And as has happened in every country in the world, the coronavirus bill is not cheap. Public spending during the pandemic in Colombia amounts to 34.6 trillion pesos, semana. To give you an idea, those 34.6 trillion pesos are equivalent to more than $9 billion. And this is just the beginning. Colombia is going to have to spend a lot more money on healthcare and economic assistance. So where is Colombia going to get that kind of money? Well, mainly by issuing debt. The problem, well, here is the problem. 
Colombia's debt is already trading as though it were junk. Bloomberg. Interest rates on the Colombian debt bond continue to rise. In other words, the more money they borrow, the more interest they commit to pay. So what could the government of Ivan Duque do to avoid all this? Well, plain and simple, collect more taxes. In this way, the state will have to ask for less debt. To give you an idea, the government needs to increase its tax collection by $6.85 billion, which explains this measure. Duque tries to push through new tax reform in Colombia, El País. At this point, you're probably wondering, how can taxes be raised in a country like Colombia? Well, Duque's plan is based on three foundations. Firstly, he wants to lower taxes on companies, in particular, technology companies, what he calls the orange economy. This is quite logical in terms of economic growth, but isn't Duque supposed to be increasing tax revenues? Yes, and this is where the most controversial part comes in. The second change is that Duque wants to raise taxes on the middle classes. Until now, only people earning more than 4.7 million Colombian pesos, which is about 1,200 US dollars a month, they paid income tax. Well, with this reform, you would start paying income tax from 2.3 million pesos, and that's about $600 US. But his plan is to boost government coffers has a third change. As I mentioned, Colombia has some of the highest consumption taxes in Latin America. However, there are a lot of products that have reductions. Well, now Duque wants to raise almost all of them. For example, computers had a reduced tax, and now that would go up to a general rate of 19%. Basic products such as milk or eggs, which previously were tax-free, would now be taxed at 5%. And this is where the big controversy comes in, because almost all these taxes affect mainly the middle and the lower classes. And this this is what has provoked the first protests. So what happened next? Well, we're going to take a look at that right now. An erroneous debate. It does not matter whether Duque's tax reform was good or bad. After the first protests, the government withdrew it. Check it out. Duque gives in to protests and withdraws Colombia's tax reform, El País. That's right, the government has listened to the protesters and has proposed a dialogue with the main unions to come up with a different tax reform. However, at the time of making this video, Colombia was still having protests. And why are they protesting now, you may ask? Part of the reason is that these unions only represent a minority of the protesters. But the main reason is this. Colombia raises death troll in protests against President Duque to 47. El Periodico. Yes, that's right. At the time of making this video, there were over 47 civilians killed by the police and 800 wounded. The Colombian riot police, the dreaded ESMAD, E S M A D, have even tortured many of the protesters. But Wait a minute, as you can imagine, all this violence by the police has not come out of nowhere. This story is not as simple as evil police against poor peaceful protesters. Listen up. Two dead and almost 100 police officers injured in protests in Colombia over tax reform. ABC. I mentioned earlier that Colombia has two faces, and this story also has two sides. On the one hand, it is undeniable that Colombia has a police brutality problem. To give you an idea, riot police use weapons like this one to repress demonstrations. <laughs> What you're looking at is the so-called Venom, a non-lethal rocket launcher for protests. In other words, it's a weapon designed to stop demonstrators without killing them. So what's the problem? The problem is that the missiles are designed to be launched parabolically, that is, an arc. However, there have been several reported cases where police have used the device to shoot directly at civilians. And in these cases, the Venom can be lethal. So you're probably wondering, but why are the Colombian police so violent? And this is where we get to the really interesting part of this video. It may surprise you, but there are more Colombians with guns than there are Colombians paying income tax. According to the Ideas for Peace Foundation, almost 5 million Colombians have illegal firearms. All this is the consequence of living in one of the most violent countries in the world. And we're not only talking about drug traffickers, but also about terrorist groups such as FARC, F-A-R-C, and the National Liberation Army, and countless paramilitary groups. In fact, many people say that there are infiltrators from these groups amongst the demonstrators. So, are they right? At this point in time, we cannot confirm anything. But it is not a completely far-fetched theory. Terrorist groups do not disappear overnight. And it is more than reasonable to think that some of these members of these groups may have joined the protests with weapons. All of this explains why the Colombian police force is more like an army than a normal police force. And I'm not exaggerating at all. You see, in almost every country in the world, the police are part of the Ministry of the Interior. In Colombia, however, they're in the Ministry of Defense. In other words, the army and the police are much more 
united in this country than in any other. And all this explains new stories like this. More than 1,000 men of the military forces and the army will arrive to reinforce security in Cali, Semana. And it is at this point where we can enter the eternal debate of who is right, the police and the army, or protesters. And the answer is neither. Think about it. The role of the police is to protect citizens. That is, protect the good guys and stop the bad guys. In this case, we're seeing the opposite. The violent ones are still on the streets, making Colombia one of the most dangerous countries in the world. However, many innocent people go to jail, suffer torture, and even die. All this has a name. A name that generates few headlines and would rarely become a trending topic on Twitter. No, it is neither Killer Police or SOS Colombia. The most fitting name is Bad Management. Yes, the Colombian police and army needs to modernize. So why don't they do it? Well, we're going to look at that right now. The Damascus Doctrine as we've said, in Colombia, the police and the army go hand in hand. So what is the Colombian army like? Well, we're talking about an army specialized in only one thing, special operations. That's right. After years of guerrilla warfare in the jungle, the Colombian army is expertly skilled in jungle operations. For example, the jungle commandos are specialists in finding drug traffickers lost in the jungle. So what's the problem? An army has to be able to do more. For example, NATO has been trying to collaborate with the Colombian army in international operations for years, but Colombia is not yet ready for that. And that's how, in 2011, this strategy came out. Colombia abandons Cold War military doctrine, gets ready for 21st century. Colombia reports. Let me introduce you to the Damascus Doctrine. You've probably never heard of it, even if you live in Colombia. But the Damascus Doctrine was Colombia's attempt to modernize its military. And what is a military doctrine, you may ask? A military doctrine is the set of manuals, processes, strategies, and tactics that guide an army. In other words, a modern army such as that of the United States or Israel does not make decisions on the spur of the moment. It is standardized in manuals and protocols. In this way, all units can agree. If you look at a military doctrine manual, you will find that everything is explained down to the smallest detail. For example, you can see how a fighter plane has to move to shoot a specific target. So what does all this have to do with the protests? Well, a lot. Because the Damascus Doctrine is not only designed for conventional warfare, but also for civil protection. Specifically, it includes a whole protocol called Unified Action. This protocol perfectly illustrates how the police, riot police, and the army can agree. It perfectly outlines how violent groups in a demonstration can be detected without attacking peaceful demonstrators. It even explains in detail how to train soldiers to avoid human rights violations. In other words, how to avoid improvisation in a risky situation. Think about it like this. Put yourself in the shoes of a policeman for a moment. You're in the middle of a demonstration where there are armed people. How would you react if you were in such a situation? Well, if you've been well trained, you should have a clear action protocol. You should know what you have to do at that moment in order to not end up choosing between dying or killing. And I know what you are probably thinking. So why hasn't this Damascus Doctrine been useful in avoiding the ultra-violence in the protests in Colombia. Well, pay attention. General Zapaterio was sworn in as army commander despite scandal. Vanguardia. In December 2019, Colombia appointed a new army chief. General Zaptero, and this is the man who is responsible for bringing the whole process of modernization of the Colombian army to a halt. And this is where we come to the really important debate in Colombia. On the one hand, we have a sector of the army that wants to modernize with military strategies and doctrines that could be approved by NATO. And on the other hand, we have the more traditional sector that does not want to make the slightest bit of change. That sector would be headed by General Zapatero. So what's the result? Colombia continues to have an army and a police force that is not prepared to handle protests. And all this means that what could have been a simple protest has turned into an urban war, a war that has put the government on the ropes. So now the question is over to you. Do you think that we could have seen a different situation if the army had kept the Damascus Doctrine? And more importantly, how can Colombia solve its fiscal problem? You can leave me your answers in the comments below. And as always, don't forget that on Visual Politic, we release new videos every week. So subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell icon so you don't miss any of our updates. And if you liked this video, like it, and I'll see you in the next one. All the best. See you soon.